Oh, do I feel good today. My goodness, do we have a packed and loaded show for you. As you can see, your boy is back in the friendly confines. We made it back to Southern California. Now, it continues to rain day after day after day, but it's raining cash. It's raining cash here in our little universe. A solid day yesterday here at the brand. Thank you to the Z-Man for stepping in for me yesterday. But as always, the crew, when you come together, solid as a rock. And I already saw somebody in the chat say they cashed with the silent assassin at 2 a.m. He's always giving out picks on his X page. So look for that. You can cash 24 hours a day. Now, as many of you know, we've got people, we got crew members all over the place. And yesterday, I kid you not, I get a ding on my phone. And one of you, and I don't know who it was, bought five shirts and sweatshirts at the same time. Our brand new merch items of the week. We've got two of them. Look at this. Do you want to do the work? Oh, that one is a hot seller already. And for you uh, WWE fans, are you going to let The Rock? Are you going to let The Rock call you a crybaby? I don't think so. Get yours. I am not a crybaby right now. And here's what I envision. I want to see these t-shirts all over arenas at WWE shows in the next two months. There is the QR code. Scan it right there. Or you can use the link in the show description. Our production is next level. Next level. And the man who's behind all of it, well, we've got two. One of them, my business partner. He's our five-tool player. Let's bring him in right now because we've got a little housekeeping to handle before we get to the stars of the show. My man, A.B. A.B., you have been working overtime. I didn't even get a chance to tell you how fire your college baseball picks. Because I was traveling yesterday, but I saw all the tweets. Good morning, sir. Good morning, coach. Good morning, everybody in the crew. Yeah, man, it was a fun weekend. It was a great start to the season. And the best part about it is that all year long, like, it's all of us together against the books, right? Like, it, that's what it is. And we yeah. all ride together, and we got to do it. It was a really fun weekend. Speaking of riding together, last night, if you are not a crew member, I got to tell you, you, you need to do it right now. We've got so much extra content over there, but the thing that we love the most, me and AB had an absolute blast. Congratulations to Robert Denson. He is our latest champion on Shoot Your Shot, and you can become a member right now. You get that little thing next to your name. How cool was it last night, AB, to do that? Dude, that was a ton of fun, man. Everybody did great. Robert crushed it, obviously, coming through with the win. And I'm telling you, man, like, it's something to be a part of. It's so much fun. Everybody gets to vote of who they thought did well. All of it, man. It, it is an absolute blast. It really, really is. And by the way, I already got a text from my man, Joe. And Joe simply says, I will be back. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody had such great attitudes, so become a member of the crew. By the way, we have Vernon Maxwell, the NBA great, on the show on Thursday. We're going to be adding exclusive interviews to the crew just right there on our page coming forward. So you're going to be seeing a lot of exclusive content, so become a member right now. And um, that's how you do it right there. Join the click button. That's how you become a crew member. I'm telling you, right, it's the best value in all sports betting. And what do I like to say? It's not close. So later today to plug one more thing, and then we'll bring in the stars of the show. Guess who's going to be on Sirius XM? It'll be at 1130 a.m. Eastern time today. Well, I hear somebody quite special. Oh, they reached out yesterday. They've heard about driving the line. They've heard about behind the turnbuckle new episode this week. They want to talk to us about it. So I will be on at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. All of you who get Sirius XM, please turn into the Fight Nation channel. We would really appreciate it. All right. Um, all we need now is a computer model. Oh, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there one step at a time. But you see how good this is. You see what AB and our producer man behind the scenes is doing every single day working. But this is all about you at home. So, A.B., the crew's play of the day. What are our choices? Four nice choices in college basketball. Now, the NBA obviously been on a break. We will get back to that the minute that they are here on Thursday. So, four college basketball options. you got UConn, minus three. Tennessee against Missouri on the road, minus 11 and a half. Texas Tech, minus five and a half. And Baylor. Plus four and a half ranked team getting points right here. So those are your four options. Poll is in the chat. 
Vote now, and we will update that and select the winner at the end of the Big Cheesy says he loves Texas Tech tonight. Um, I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot of picks coming. But, A.B., do you, do you feel that? Do, 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 you feel, do you feel a presence, a presence that could be coming back on the show today? Do you feel the overwhelming surge? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest today and also the man you love the most. He has been off for a couple of weeks. He still sends in his picks, but he is back live this morning. In the chat, after you hit the like button, say welcome back, Howie. Let's bring in the stars of the show because right now I could not be more excited to see this face on your screen right here, live right now. Oh, where is he? There he is. Howard. Let's start. Raphael, I'll, I'll get to you in a minute. I'll get to you in a minute. Howie, how are you feeling? I'm Great doing much, I'm doing much better, Coach. Uh, fortunately, things are well. Uh, I had a pacemaker added, which was a very interesting situation. But I'm doing fine, except for St. John's. That's another story. <laughs> But that's uh, what I love. <laughs> Let me say this. First off, Howie, it's so good to see you again, man. Good I to see you, AB. Absolutely, buddy. It's so good to see your face. And number two, my man isn't worried about a damn thing medical wise. He's like, I'm going to get these picks going. That's what I love. Howie is a beast. Everybody's missed you, man. It's good to see you. Good to be here. I can just see him. How they're putting in the pacemaker. I'm just real quick. I need to send in my my Houston pick right now. My over on that. Could you hold hold Doc? For Dude, that for a he's second? in the he's no, in the middle of surgery. He's in the middle of surgery Ohio asking State. for ESPN Plus. Like, can you put it on the TV? Iowa Ohio State was on that night, and I wanted to see the end of the game, and I got wheeled back in just to see the end of the game. Yeah, true. <laughs> I love him. Incredible. Incredible, incredible. So many good wishes there in the chat. Keep them coming for our man, Howie. But also, the other men on the screen, and normally don't want, we don't make our guests wait this long, but today Sorry. it's Dr. Sports <laughs> Service. He is an odds maker for so many different places and really is going to make you smarter having him a part of the crew. Rafael Esparza, welcome to Driving the Line, sir. Thank you, guys. And Howie, what a, it's an honor to meet you. I used to watch you when I worked at Caesars Palace Sportsbook. I, I was watch you on TV all the time. So it, it's an honor. Coach, uh, big, big, big WWE fan right here who does odds. So uh, it's uh, what a way to wake up today to, to see you guys on my screen. It's a great morning. It's what we're all about, baby. It's what we're all about. It's all about the universe. It's all about the community. We get up, we have a good time, educate and entertain. Knowledge is power. And then we send everybody out, Raphael, into the world to spread the good word of driving the line. Now, we got to get right into our picks because we've got a lot coming. And by the way, all of you guys that always ask about soccer, Charles, Jacob, Silent Assassin, um, they're coming. They're just waiting, but they're coming. You best believe that. All right, Raphael, you are our guest today. So I'm going to let you go first. And you brought one, one college basketball play. And this is a team that's the defending champion. This is a team that has been playing really good basketball. Why do you like UConn tonight? Oh, they played once already, and UConn had no problem beating them uh, last time they played. I just think now that Purdue lost, you figure UConn knows that they're the number one team. Do they want to lose again uh, a number one team as to Purdue did on Sunday? I just think the defensive pressure of UConn on the road, yeah, it's on the road, but Creighton is not a good home team, especially against the spread. Uh, I think it's a small three. This one will probably get bet up to three and a half, just like you guys said you like Texas Tech. Jump on that five and a half right now. I just looked at my screen uh, from multiple books. That number will be to six probably in the next hour, hour and a half. Same thing with UConn. This three won't be there. I, I think it moves probably three and a half, uh, maybe move the juice around if they don't want to move it to three and a half. But I think it's a soft three. All right. Shout out to Daryl in the chat. Says, welcome back, Raphael, or welcome back to the legend, Howie Schwab, as well. Keep those messages coming. Boy, I already like how you give a take. You're very short, concise. I like it. Uh, we're going to have this man on a lot because he understands the lines and moves them. And, and it's stuff that, that I can't do, and we can't do. That's why we have a crew. All right, so we got one play from Raphael. If you have any questions for Raphael, put him into the chat. I'll try to get to him. Now, Howie, let me come over to you, big boy. My heart is just full today. I'm just sorry. I'm in a great mood. My heart is full. You have three <laughs> plays that you sent in last night. You've loved them since last night. Talk to me. It's ironic because 
I don't know how lately I'm going against people like last night with Houston, uh, which killed me. Uh, I have Creighton covering against Connecticut, and I'll tell you why. Playing in Omaha, it's not an easy place to play. The fans are going to be nuts. And more importantly, for UConn to go Marquette and blow them out and then have to do it again against Creighton, I have a feeling Creighton with the veteran team, with Baylor Shireman playing really well, Creighton's going to not only give them a game, I think Creighton can upset them. Uh, and we've had so many upsets, we're due for UConn to go down long winning streak. Then I also have Wake Forest beating Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's got a five-game winning streak. And the first game, Pittsburgh won by five. This time, I think Wake Forest turns it around. And then St. Mary's, I'll tell you what, what a great job they're doing out there in the WCC. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcelonis has been on fire lately. They have uh, a lot of talent. They're a sleeper team. So I'm going with St. Mary's over San Francisco. I got to tell you, I live out here in Southern California, and leading the, the sports a lot of nights is St. Mary's. It's crazy. They're a really big-time story. Now, if you're new to our little show here, and we are adding literally hundreds of new subscribers every single day, then you go, wait a second, why would they have – opposite picks on the show well no we never talk before the show because we let our cappers do what they do and then we let you decide where you want to go that's why Raphael likes UConn he's allowed to do that how he likes Creighton he just gave you that great analysis now you choose which one you like and tomorrow on the show we get to discuss that's the beauty of what we do Raphael, I know that Howie's a legend, but how do you feel about the fact he looked you straight in the eye? He went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He said, uh-uh, I don't like UConn today. Your response? I'm hoping he didn't play last night because it's three and a half now at BetMGM. As we were speaking, it moved to three and a half at BetMGM. So this, uh, for me, I tell people sports betting is numbers, not the team on the jerseys or team on the back. Why would you lay two and a half knowing that UConn bet money was coming in since it opened last night? I, again, this one will be a three and a half, so – for Howie's uh, fans out there, yes, jump on Creighton at plus three and a half. I think it's a great, great, great number. If it was three and a half, I wouldn't touch UConn on this game, period. I would just pass on it, maybe look at St. Mary's, because if they win tonight, they're actually probably going to be the conference winners because they have two games ahead of Gonzaga. When was the last time you can say that without going to New Orleans uh, and Vegas to see the matchup? So, yeah, I, I like the three and a half now with Creighton. I wouldn't touch UConn at three and a half if it was right now. I would say scratch it. Hey, Raphael, how, how busy are you at 10 a.m. on weekdays? Because I'm thinking. 10 a.m.? More like it's 5 a.m. Oh, my God. We're just, we just keep growing the crew. Amazing, amazing. That's what you get right here. That's what I'm talking about. No place else. No place else. All right, we got – yes, how we go. Coach, you know, it's amazing how the line shifting makes a difference. Because I, from what I heard, the Houston line last night moved down to like seven and a half, which would have covered but unfortunately, early on, it was nine and a half when we had it. We lose. Uh, the people, you guys who had Iowa State, good job. That yeah, sharp, money came, sharp money came in really, really, really late on that game. Hey, I'll tell you what came in late on that game were fouls. That oh, helped yes. out on that over a ton. <laughs> yep. we, we were doing shoot your shot, and they had like 18 points in the first 10 minutes, and A.B. was losing his mind because the chat was all over. Where are the points? Where are the points? But well, we covered, baby. We covered. Free all right, throws. A.B., I've been seeing that smile a lot from you the last year. They're, they're amazing, aren't they? How it's, it's crazy in college they still do that, but in the NBA, you're down by eight. And the, oh, we can't. We can't. That drives me crazy in the NBA. When they don't Absolutely. Pass. It drives me nuts. All right, Raphael, thank you. Howie, thank you. Hang tight. A.B., we already talked about Texas Tech, top of the show. And you like them straight, but also you got a little money line parlay for the good people today. Bring it home. Absolutely. Texas Tech, minus five and a half. This team has to win, period. This is a must-win game, a must-handle-your-business game. I'm going to give you no other breakdown than that. Texas Tech handles their business tonight. Next, we're going to go to college baseball, two-leg money line parlay here. Coastal Carolina and Florida put those two together, minus 120, and I'm going to tell you why. We are now in midweek baseball. 
Okay. Understand that as we go, midweek games are non-conference, and that's generally where you get freshman pitchers in, your number four guys. You give some of your starters a little bit of rest, get some of your young guys, but you don't do that in week one to week two. And both of these teams actually had disappointing weekends. Florida only played one game, lost, and then every other game was canceled out so they're now playing today this is a serious game for the gators in coastal carolina as well the shanna clears need to take care of business put those two together minus 120 howie you're shaking your head talk to me he's absolutely right because i watched that florida st john's game st john's led seven nothing against the team that was number two in the country and hung on great relief pitching florida has a veteran squad a lot of good hitters. They will bounce back today. Absolutely right. I will wait for any of you at home to go find any other show on TV or otherwise that talks about college baseball and caches as much as we will. I'll wait, but I'll be here all freaking day. So let's continue. Now, we're going to have a little college ba uh, basketball segment after we do our soccer on questions like this. They say, how come nobody's talking about Michigan State? Izzo always leans into the end of the season. Hang tight. We'll be talking about college basketball and how he's picks that he's looking forward to or teams in just a little bit. But one quick question before we get to soccer. Our girl Megan and Raphael, I'll bring it to you, says now that the line has moved to three and a half, what do we think about the total in the UConn uh, Creighton game? I made the total just what it was, so I kind of passed on it. Unless for some reason it moves one to two points on this one. Uh, for me, now it's a pass game. I don't think the total is going to move. Let me click on there. It's been 145 all since 1 o'clock in the morning last night. It opened up at 144 and a half. If you're going to look at this, maybe look at the over. If Creighton can score points at home, again, you already said it's a hard place to beat uh, uh, Creighton at home. So the three-point shot might be going in for the home team. Maybe take a shot, but I want nothing to do with that. 145 is a great, great number on this total. Cortez, A.B., Cortez said in the chat, he goes, I like this guy. I concur. I like this guy a lot. I like this guy a lot. Uh, by the way, Joey says AB's college baseball pick should be behind the subscription wall, in my opinion, top value. Hey, Joey, we'll have plenty behind the paywall. We want to give you all this for free on this show, but believe me, we'll have plenty behind the paywall. Don't you even worry about it. I have all to right. talk to AB about his baseball plays because I talked to some books yesterday about college baseball. And they're, they're not happy right now. No, they're that's not. another story. That's not. That's another story. <laughs> Look at that tease. All right, Raphael, Howie, AB, I need you guys to go sit on the bench because I got to call in my two lefties. I got to call in my two lefties because these two guys have been absolutely destroying it lately. Let's bring in our soccer stars of the show. You know them. You love them. The silent assassin, Jacob. He's the man that runs everything here at Driving the Line. And the man from the dirty, dirty, Charles. Now, gentlemen, last night, this is how much you guys are committed to being a part of this. We taped at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time last night our Champions League episode, which is live right now on this very page. Subscribe, like, share, because we have two big Champions League games today. Charles, let me come to you first. Why is it so important to get these picks and this information out even the night before for Champions League? Well, Coach, if you saw um, the Dortmund match, that's – that line has moved aggressively. So has the Inter Milan as well. So we definitely beat the value by getting those plays out overnight. I agree. Jacob, now you text me. I got a text at like 3 a.m. from you. And uh, TJ says in the chat, Jacob is looking sharp today. So, Charles, I get, I get this text from Jacob at 3 a.m. And let me read it to you. It says, Coach, I've got my background in. I'm going to have it up in the morning feeling fire. Feeling fire? Feeling fire, Jacob? How about, you know what, last night when Shoot Your Shot, I told your boy Payam, who's on your YouTube channel, you've got your own brand. We always like to plug it whenever we can, at Pick Management. And I said, how about you center yourself in your screen because that's what the pros do on driving the line. And now this morning, you come on here and you're off center. Would Elena, mm -hmm. would she allow you to be off center? Oh, I, I I didn't think I was off center. We're gonna have to talk oh. to Mr. Production Man about that. So, 
Oh, you're throwing production men under the bus. Interesting. Interesting <laughs> philosophy. All right. Uh, TJ says, my background won last night. My wife says and was proud she put it together for me. Yeah, TJ. Apparently, Jacob doesn't have the same professional credibility. Elena, <laughs> get it better. No, I'm not talking about the back. I'm talking about you're, you're not centered up. That's oh. all right. Don't Sorry, Coach. Hot. Won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it, guys. Uh, we've got a, a a lot of soccer around the world today. Again, no Champions League here. That's on a separate episode. It's already done. You can check that out. Charles, let me come to you because I'm looking at three different plays, and I love how you dig into these games and you make it a little bit different. What do you got today? Absolutely, Coach. Uh, we're going Man City and Brentford. This is a rematch from two weeks ago when Man City won one to three in West London. In London, and honestly, it should have been more if not for the Brentford goalkeeper. And after the weekend, Man City should come in extra motivated to get all three points. And at the Etihad Stadium, the citizens have been dominant, failing to lose in 12 home league matches while scoring 30 goals for an average of 2.5 team goals. Meanwhile, Brentford, no Man City will be in a bad mood after Saturday. And the Bees have had their issues with conceding goals, allowing at least three goals in six of their last nine league games. Based on this matchup, I expect a replay of the last meeting with City having at least 70% possession and creating double-digit shots on goal. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend the over 1.5 first-half goals. Man City team total over 2.5 goals. And Ivan Tony anytime goal scorer, because I do expect Brentford to get at least one goal. And if anyone's going to do it, it's Ivan Tony. Three fire picks, Charles. And why you were giving those out, or while you were giving those out, I was getting scolded. I never want to get scolded by the wives. I knew the minute it came out of my mouth. It's Alana. Sorry, I said Alana. It's Alana. Alana. But she also writes, the very first text to her mother this morning was that Jacob was off center. Oh, no. See, Jacob, even Alana agrees. But I'm going to give you a pass because like Better Days Ahead in the chat says, you guys are auto tails. You guys are so incredibly good when it comes to soccer. You got to have your own show and you got to have your own place in the show. So I'm going to give you a break. But I'm seeing five plays. It's time to shoot your shot. The stopwatch is on. Let's see what you can do. Go, big boy. Oh, yeah. We're digging in. This is my lower league lowdown for today's episode. <laughs> I am all over uh, English Championship Southampton in over one and a half goals. The third place Southampton team, uh, really good, scores a lot of goals. Over and a win and over three and a half has hit in four of the last five. So win and over one and a half should be an easy cash here. I'm also all over this uh English League One play. I love Oxford United team total over one and a half here. Play in Northampton, who has lost 70% of the road games, given up two plus goals in eight out of their last 10. So I really love Oxford to get it done at home, uh, score a couple goals. And then I like uh, we're going deep into England, England National League North. Boston United minus 136. That's one play and their team total over one and a half. Uh, they are ninth place playing Darlington, who's 23rd. This is a more of a play against Darlington than on Boston. Uh, Darlington, just a really poor team. One of the worst in uh, England National League North. Uh, and uh, we're taking Boston because of that. Lastly, Yeovil first place in England National League South, taking on Weston Supermare, 16th place. Uh, Yeovil 14-0-3 at home. Over one and a half team total in 13 of those. Really love them to crush Weston Supermare today. And that is my lower league lowdown for driving the line. The lower <laughs> league lowdown. I like it. The lower yeah. league lowdown. Well, we're going to have to make a, uh, a nice little graphic for that so we can have it segmented out. Because, of course, I forgot to say bet the board today. So I'm already an idiot. My producer's already mad at me. Uh, quick question <laughs> before I bring the guys back in. Uh, either one of you can take it. Daryl says, anyone like Mexico to beat Argentina? in women's soccer today 15 seconds or less who wants it uh, i'll take it uh yeah argentina uh the better team here i would say uh argentina just a better program overall when it comes to women's soccer than mexico right now all right very very good gentlemen i'm gonna let you get into the chat remember champions league in the uh in the live right now on our page tomorrow we'll have the two games for champions league and also my man charles always has his Europa league on Thursday, so all of that separate, but right here on this YouTube page, I encourage you to subscribe. Gentlemen, Charles, Silent Assassin, thank you very much. All right, I need 
I need, I need. It is time for a little discussion, and the boys are back. But before we do that, because I don't want to get yelled at again, it's time. It's time for the rundown. All right, and I need to bring Raphael back as well for this discussion because, Howie, you've been known on camera to have a little bit of a meltdown from time to time. So I thought it would be appropriate that we ask you, because a lot of people that are into sports betting now don't know the legend that is Rick Patino, and he now coaches at the college that you love the most, St. John's. What did you make, and do you think it's a good motivational tool to absolutely destroy your team post game when they've given up a 19 point lead. No, no, I don't. Uh, and the problem is, and I know Coach Patino, uh, he's very frustrated with this group. Uh, but they, you know, the chemistry is so important, and yet guys just take wild shots when they're up 19 points, and then all of a sudden the lead goes down to 10, then it goes down to five, then they lose the lead altogether. The last seven losses, they've been outscored in the second half badly of almost all of them. Terrible. I mean, the Marquette game, they were up big. This game against Seton Hall, they were up big. Uh, it's ridiculous. They're now off the bubble. They're on the wrong side to me. It's very disappointing because I think they have talent. Earlier in the year, they looked like they had talent. Soriano has kind of disappeared at times. Uh, the guards have just not played as well. Jenkins has been the only guy who's really stepped it up. And it's very disappointing. Now they play Georgetown better when that game. But uh, it's not over yet because they, the Big East tournaments at the Garden, they could get hot. You never know. And Petito's trying to motivate them. And, uh, Raphael, I got one for you. But, A.B., let me come to you first. Your reaction, I see you laughing a little bit over there. Oh, how he's a hundred percent correct. What Rick Petito is doing is, yeah, he's getting his point across, but he's doing it to the team. Like that's a message to the team saying, what the hell is wrong with you people? Like I have got everything set up, ready to go. You don't have to do anything, but listen to me. And you can't even do that. Like Rick Petito has won everywhere. He's been everywhere. You could take five. You could take this show and we'd be a March Madness bubble team, right? Like, that's how good of a coach that he is. And he's saying, fellas, listen to what I'm saying. You don't have to do anything else. Listen to me. So I, I agree with Howie. And I agree with Patino, man. Like, he, he knows what he's doing. They need to listen to him. Raphael, you are, and I'm going to make this official this morning, you're our expert when it comes to line and line movement and setting. When you see something like this and everything that Howie and AB just talked about, and then as they move forward, obviously the lines are set, but how much do you think a game like this or a stretch like this affects the line when it comes to a team like St. John's? A view of him blowing up his team. I'm like, is it 1990, 1994? Is this Bobby Knight? Because this was normal back then with Bobby Knight ripping his team and everyone else. But that, that, that he can't do this now. Uh, the kids can't handle this kind of scrutiny on TV and all the social media platforms. So yeah, this is going to crush them. Their last six games, they've won one. And that was against DePaul, which us four could probably beat DePaul. Uh, so I, I, they're a complete fade team. I never thought they were going to uh, make it to a tournament. I think we had that prop bet when college basketball started. Will St. John's make the, make the tournament? I think the no got bet all the way up to, main, I think it was minus 350, maybe close to $4. Because just because Patino's there doesn't mean he, they were automatically going to go to the tournament, make a Final Four run. The Big East has a lot of good powerhouse teams in there. So uh, it didn't shock me because I think Patino still thinks it's in the 1990s uh, how he's coaching this team. How he go? The problem with the NIL is oh. this. When you sign a bunch of players – Ledlam, Dingle, guys were getting two hundred fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars on that roster. It's ridiculous. They're trying to get their shots. They're trying to show that they can play either in the G League, Europe, or the NBA. Eventually, they're all for themselves, and they're not playing as a team. And it's ridiculous. Terrible. To I watch. saw the head coach. What's the head coach's name at Oklahoma State? What's his name? 
Um, I, I saw him yeah. complaining about NIL. Yeah, he was like, this is not even recruiting anymore. This is walking into it and saying, listen, I can give you half a million dollars for nine months. That's what it's turned into. This and is so- why Jay Wright left Villanova. Yep. Jay yeah. Wright saw this coming. Hey, right. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. No lie. I'm part of an NIL collective, all right? We can break a lot of this down. I know exactly how the like everything Howie is saying is exactly right and especially in college basketball because when you see year ago two years ago a freshman starter at Duke basketball that starts all season has a great year and then leaves who does that why would you do that at all it's because the money is in transferring it's not in NI with let me tell you step back there's money in NIL there's a lot of money in transferring your NIL. That's where it is. And if you want to ask, ask your boy Quinn Ewers. Remember when he was at Ohio State and they gave him two brand new trucks? And what did my <laughs> man do? He drove those trucks right down to Texas. And that that dealership said, you have to give those trucks back. And his dad said, the hell we do. We don't have to get nothing back. And those are sitting in his driveway right now. So, man, there's so, so much. It's it changed the game. It's a completely different sport. All I, I feel like this should be a separate segment, little episode, maybe a crew exclusive, perhaps that AB you can do with the guys. I think that's a very good idea. Now, winning ugly, and I do apologize if you guys have been watching the news. The weather out here in Southern California is bananas. If I drop off for a little bit, that's why it's it's literally pouring down rain for like the eight thousandth day in a row. But winning ugly says I've been casting with the crew all over the board lately. Well, guess what? We're heading into March Madness. We're heading into Howie's time of the year. So we're going to lean into him a lot. I want to start this morning, Howie, and then I'll get the guys' reaction. I know there's at least three teams that as we head into the final week of February and also getting ready for March Madness that you've got your eye on. Talk to me. Well, I'm going to start with Dayton in the A-10. Holmes is a legitimate All-American candidate. Anthony Grant has done a great job. They play solid defense. And they've played a pretty decent schedule overall. So I'm going to say Dayton is one. St. Mary's, who I mentioned earlier, uh, they have been on fire. Coach Ben's done a terrific job. Marshallonis, uh, Mahaney, they have players who can score. They can defend. I really like St. Mary's to make some noise this year. The third one will surprise you, South Florida. What they did to Florida Atlantic the other day it almost blew a 25-point lead. I was amazed at their shooting. Now, South Florida, to get into the tournament, probably has to win the conference tournament because I don't think their non-league schedule was good enough. But you know what? They're capable of it. And the AAC has been a really good league this year. When you look at South Florida, you look at surprising Charlotte, you look at Florida Atlantic, UAB, SMU, I mean, a lot of these teams are really good, have great records. But I think South Florida could be a surprise team. Big Cheesy says South Florida, Howie knows. Raphael, from a line perspective, when you're talking mid-majors, and now kind of the way basketball has changed, maybe they're not technically mid-majors anymore. But is this a place that people can really, if they really do their work, or, of course, they watch driving the line, can really find some value? I agree. St. Mary's probably not just how they played all season long. I think the odds makers have caught up to them. Uh, Because let's face it, we haven't talked about Gonzaga all season long. It's all about St. Mary's uh, in the WCC. Keep an eye out for the Mountain West. I know they're a mid-major, but this conference is better than the Pac-12. This conference may be better than the ACC and probably is going to have six teams in there that people don't know, like the Utah States, New Mexico. uh, uh, Everyone remembers San Diego State because of last year, Colorado State, stuff like that. So mid-major yeah, Mountain West can make some noise in the, in the tournament. But I love the St. Mary's. They're probably going to be a six seed. I'm hoping they stay there because they can probably beat 11 seed. I hope they don't go up to a five seed because we all know about the 5-12 uh, misery that could happen in a tournament. I, I would like to see them stay in the six. But St. Mary's is going to be a force uh, at this tournament. Great analysis. A.B., according to somebody in the chat, apparently there's a boost at DraftKings tonight on St. Mary's. And that's one of Howie's picks. So that would be good. Oh, yeah. St. Mary's is a phenomenal basketball team, and they've been that, right? Now, that game tonight against San Francisco is going to be an awesome, awesome basketball game. Seriously, that, it is going to be fun. And I hear that somebody's uh, very intelligent 
might have a play on the total there coming up for a little crew exclusive today, which is a brilliant play on that one. Let me take it a step back of what the guys just said, and they're exactly right. Here is kind of an overview of the tournament as a whole. It's wide open. It's wide open. We're not talking about anyone in particular. We've got a UConn team that is, you know, threatening to go back to back. Who's talking about UConn, right? Like, we're going to see them tonight, and I'm fascinated to see how they go down the stretch. They're playing great basketball. But as a whole, like, this thing is wide open, man. Like, I am so fascinated to see how the seeding goes, what the tournament looks like, and upsets that we have. Because as the guys mentioned, they're mid-major teams. They could come out and smoke top 10 teams right now, ready to go. St. Mary's can play with anybody, anybody. And the Mountain West, as they were saying, there's a lot of good teams out there, man. So overall, like pay attention as we get closer to conference play that this thing is right there. I mean, all season long, what, what have we spoken about? Top 10 teams, two good games, boom, get smoked. Two good games, boom, get smoked. And it's been all up and down the list. Look at North Carolina. Look at Tennessee. Just keep going, right? Like there's no one that is dominating, and that's why the conversation is wide, wide open. Yes, Howie. In the tournament last year, they weren't at the Final Four. I mean, it's, it's totally wide open, and that was what makes it fun. I mean, right now, I mean, last year, Florida Atlantic in the Final Four. I mean, who had that? I mean, San Diego State, um, I, I, even Miami. I mean, amazing stuff going on, and the tournament is wide open. You said it perfectly, A.B. I'm going to ask everybody at home. One very simple question, which just happens to be our featured merch item of the week. After the last two and a half, three minutes that you heard from these three, do you want to do the work? I didn't think so. Now, I also just got a text because there's apparently this group called Howie's Homies that somehow <laughs> got my, my phone number. And this is the question they ask Howie. It's a question from Howie's homies. And they said, Coach, is there any way that Howie would do a crew exclusive preview of the teams he likes right before championship week? Would love to. I'll do it. Just tell me when. That's what if I'm I have to do it from dialysis, I'll do it. He'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not a member of the crew now, I don't know what else to tell you. If he has to do it from dialysis, he will do it. Gentlemen, well done today. And by the way, A.B. already mentioned it. If you're not a member of the crew yet, I encourage you to do it right now. We have crew exclusives. Because remember, it's for those of you who want more. Every single day, we have a little extra segment over there. Everybody makes an extra pick. But... We want you to be a part of what we're doing right there. All you got to do is click that join button. How good does that look? I think there's a lot of networks out there right now that could learn from AB and producer man behind the scenes. Uh, Raphael, before I let you get out of here, I need you. I need you a part of this show. I need I'm here. Show. All right. We're going to be talking. We'll have Jacob call you, text you. Eric says, love this group so good. You're damn right, Eric. This is what we've been working on for five or six weeks. Hard to believe it's only week six. Incredible. Love That's crazy. Group. Isn't that crazy? Looks this so is just a reading the comments and only Jacob telling me how long you guys been. It's, been, it's completely not. I've done shows that have no comments. I've been doing it for years and years and years. So uh, hats off to the guys that have been doing this. Uh, hats it's off. It's fun. It's that simple. It's fun. And it's great to have you on board. Thank you, Howie. I hope you feel better too, because I've been there. I've been there before with the pacemaker. I've been. Brian says you guys are the very. <laughs> Damn, I guess maybe I should throw it in too. My dad had a heart transplant five years ago on Christmas Eve. <laughs> True story. True story. So that was the greatest Christmas present anybody could ever have. Is your dad getting a heart transplant? Santa was nice that year. He was. He was. He was. All right, um, gentlemen, I gotta let you drop off because we've got to close this thing. Thank you very much, Raphael. The great Howie Schwab. You can see them both in our crew exclusive picks today that will be posted in about 15 or 20 minutes. AB, this might be the best show we've ever done. It's awesome. It's awesome. And look, we missed you yesterday um, for sure, right? 
But Zaz did a great job hosting. All right. And James came on. Go look at his picks. Like our man did fantastic, broke it down. He's a college baseball better as well. He's going to be back. Raphael just crushed it. Howie's the goat. I mean, he's just, he's Howie. He's the best that there is. So absolutely, man. It's awesome. Joey says the DTL stable grows stronger every day. And I know because they contact me. If you are a sports book out there, you're any company, you better get on board right now because we only have limited. Hey, we only have are, we limited. Turning this in, are we turning this into a faction? Are we like the new four horsemen? We might be. We might be. We might be. I love it. <gasps> Speaking of that, do not forget in less than one hour, your boy will be on Sirius XM busted open talking about the rock, talking about all these fun things. Our new wrestling show called behind the turnbuckle. If you haven't subscribed there, I encourage you to do it. We got stuff for you every single day. So many different ways, but AB, it always comes back to the closing bell. All right, what do we got for the crew today? All right, so hold on here. We've got music going all over the place. All right, so this is an overwhelming selection that the crew has gone with. UConn, minus three at 56%. They're wow. rolling with UConn here, so we'll see. Uh, Howie, and look, there was some in the chat going Creighton on the other side. Yeah, Omaha is a tough place to play for sure, but the crew has chosen. Uh, to go with UConn. Now, the last thing that I'll say, Coach, is this. Can I offer a surprise? Would you like that? Always. Okay. So, starting today, every Tuesday, on Driving the Line, the YouTube page, free, everybody has access, you are going to get a video called This Week in Baseball. And it's going to be college baseball-centric. What it will be, the brand new rankings that come out, all right? We have those ready to go. And what we're looking at this week and this weekend. So everybody's prepared when Friday, Saturday, and Sunday get here. We're going to make sure that you are the most educated group in college baseball and are ready to smash the book. So you'll see my picks for the weekend, but you'll be crushing your own picks as well, and we'll break it all down. So every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, you will see it on the page. We'll tweet it out and all that, but just go to the front page of the YouTube, and there you go. So I'm getting emotional just, just <laughs> thinking about it. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Uh, let me let – and this one's not even confirmed yet, so I'm, I'm hesitant to even bring it up, but this is how far we are reaching here on Driving the Line. Do you know what I was doing, A.B., last night? By the way, you're getting so much love in the chat. Do you know what I was doing last night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern time? Do you have any idea what I was doing? No. So I was on this platform right here. And oh, Saudi I was, Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So I'm on with guys from Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, 11.30 p.m. I kid you not. And I have talked to PFL and all the powers that be because we want to help them grow. And they just bought Bellator. There's a lot of MMA fans here. Last week, Jimmy Smith was here. He's going to be here all the time. So I've talked them into doing a – it's a show called Betting the PFL. And we recorded our first episode last night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'll take it a step further. I've asked them if we can also post it right here on our page in addition to where they're going to put it, which is some big-time stuff. They are waiting for one more answer, but there's a very good chance we could get that show right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's, that's dope. I love it. Absolutely love it. And if they want to make sure, you know, that they get all of their, you know, views and credit, whatever, we could set all that up for them, have them absolutely take care of. Nicely done on that, Coach. Well, hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're everywhere. We let, like, the first month go by and figuring things out, but now this is where we do a rocket ship. This is where we take off. And anybody else, I beg you, get on the sidelines. Get out of our way. Don't even want to – Zach says that Coach Lee PGA Tour live for live. No, I did not. But that's a good idea. 
Never would I do that. I love the PGA Tour. Are you kidding me right now? By the way, speaking of, <laughs> I can't believe how much we do. Speaking of golf, today at 3 p.m. Eastern time, that was next on my list, DTL Golf, me and the guys. We'll break down everything Mexico Open today right here on this channel, 3 p.m. live. Can we do any more content, A.B.? Can we do any no. more? And I'll tell you what, I'm glad that you brought that up. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to put the college baseball an hour before so that you have that. And then, bam, it leads you right into everything that you guys are doing. And you're breaking down, I think it's what, the Mexico Open and then the matches on Monday. Is that correct? Am I right with that? The, the matches on Monday? I think so. I think go go and check it. But I, I think the, the tournament like this week is what the Mexico Open? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Thursday yeah. through Sunday. Thursday yeah. through Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh by the way, um, it's so funny. People come here. The coach is unbearable. Yeah. <clears throat> so many people think so. Uh don't say never, coach. Money talks. Um, no, listening to coach on PGA is an awesome part of my weekend. You can come here. It's so funny. They come and they insult, but it's like our show, and yet they've taken the time to come here. So we welcome everybody. We welcome everybody. A.B., well done today. I'll see you at 2 p.m. Eastern time with the college baseball video. That's going to be amazing, and that will be a staple the entire college baseball season. We love all of you. A.B. loves all of you. The entire crew loves all of you. So thank you very much. Now, last night at the end of Shoot Your Shot, my man Robert, who's in the chat right now, he attempted to do this, and he got it about 65% right. And that is how we close every single show. So hopefully you enjoyed yourselves today, because we certainly did. And with all that being said, there's only one thing left to do. And I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these tickets straight. To the pay window. For my entire crew, Lobo, my man Raphael, the great Howie Schwab, the man from the dirty, dirty Charles, the silent assassin Jacob, my partner, the five tool player AB, and producer man, always behind the scenes. I am simply the coach trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about. We'll be here all day. Subscribe, like, and share. We call it Driving the Line. Good luck.